I want to look at the book of Jude. One chapter of the book of Jude. Somebody asked me when we were going to finish Jude. And I have no idea. 25 verses, and sometimes it takes a little bit to get all, in, all of that in. And I think we've gotten down to about six verses, and we've been here about three weeks. So we're not making very much progress, but I don't know of anywhere we got to be until the trumpet sounds. And so then we'll all be in heaven, and then we'll know about the book of Jesus. All right, if you're there, say amen. amen. Now I'm going to read already where we've already dealt with and read up to where we want to go to. Obviously, you know by now the book of Jude was written by the half-brother of Jesus and written right before the revelation and was placed there for that reason, for us to know the book of Jude is going to give us some things that's going on right before the, the coming of the Lord. And so we've already seen some of this. And Jude, when he starts out, he starts out, he really talks about uh, being uh, uh, preserved in Jesus Christ and sanctified by God and all that kind of thing. And then it's almost like he stops and says, I would really love to finish that sermon, but I have need to tell you that we in these last days have to contend for the faith. And what our churches are faced with is we're not, uh, we're not standing up and fighting for our faith anymore. Look at verse 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and the Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance now he's going to remind them of three different groups of people. The first group's found in five, the next one in six, and the, next one, the other one in seven. Look, uh, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And we talked about that a few weeks ago. Last week we got into verse number 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He hath reserved in the everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Now, what he's doing is, what God is doing is saying, okay, we've got three different groups of people. You've got the unbelieving Israelites in the land, or when I led them out of Egypt, unbelieving, and so I had to deal with them. Verse 6, those angels that kept not their first estate, fallen angels. We talked about the, the evil spirits and the principalities of the air. He didn't let them get by with it. He had to destroy them or, or judge them. And then verse 7 is the third group of people. And look at verse number 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and the going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Everybody, or you should know what happened, the story that happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah was a city that was uh, ungodly, filthy, dirty. And all of these things were going on. Lot and his family, why Lot had his family in that? particular situation, nobody knows. But the, the angel of the Lord and two others came down, uh, angels, men, that came down and said, Lot, you need to get you and your family get out of here because God's fixing to burn this place to the ground. And so they did, and God destroyed that whole place, and Lot and his family got out by the skin of their teeth. And what God was doing is saying, 
I did let the nation of Israel get away with what they did. I did not let the angels, the fallen angels, get away with what they did. I did not let Sodom and Gomorrah get away with what they, they've done. And I'm not going to let this world or America get away with what they're doing. That's his uh, implication. Now, um, everybody knows Sodom and Gomorrah was dealing with, you know, when you say strange flesh, what we're talking about strange flesh is flesh that don't belong to you. Um, uh, let's see, look at, uh, go to the left, look at 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 13. 2 Timothy 3, 13. Well, uh, I tell you what, look at verse 1. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Now, without natural affection, we explain that, and without natural affection, it's not natural. Truth breakers, false accusers, incompetent fears, despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Now, and he goes on, he talks about all that, but look, verse number 13. 13 in the Bible, 13 is the number of rebellion, watch. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Y'all see that? Um, have you ever heard people, well, sometimes on television, you'll hear some of the TV preachers. Uh, and if you listen to them, they preach a prosperity gospel. And what that is, is, um, and, and look, all I do, all I know to do is call names because, I mean, you know who they are and whatever. But I'll give you an example. And you may like Joel Osteen. If you do, that's fine. No problem. As far as I know, he's a good fellow. Uh, but a good preacher, he just he just don't preach the whole Bible. But if you heard him, how to live your best life? Just love your neighbor. Just kiss your dog every morning. Wreck your neighbor's yard. Everything's gonna be all right. The world is just a better place. You continue going on. And by, by the time you leave, you're all warm and fuzzy, and you think this world is fixing to get better and better and better, and if you'll get better and better and better and start loving your neighbor and kissing your cat and all that kind of stuff, I mean, this whole world will turn around and be better and better. But the Bible says evil binge will wax worse and worse. This thing's not getting any better. It's getting worse and worse. Now, did you realize that proves that evol evolution is... A, a hoax. Evolution says we evolved. We started out as a tadpole, whatever we started, amoeba, whatever it was. <laughs> you form and you get better and you turn into a frog and you get better and better and somebody comes along and kisses you and you turn into a prince and everything is better and better and we evolved. But that's not the case. Because I watched some of you. Some of you wobbled in here like you're about to fall down. You're not evolving. You're going the other way. Hey, some days when I get up, it may, it's tough. And I'm thinking, I'm not evolving. I'm not getting better. I'm getting worse. Well, just in the physical sense, we get worse and worse. The spiritual sense is the same way. Evil men shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now, I want you to go to Romans chapter 1. Look at Romans. We're coming back to Jude, and I promise we'll cover some ground. I hope. Romans chapter 1. Many of you have read these verses before. This is the fall of the Roman Empire. Romans chapter 1. And uh, let's look at verse. Uh, let's look at verse eighteen. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that.
which may be known of God is manifested in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. When a person stands before God, they're without excuse. You say, well, what if they don't know God? Well, he just told you creation tells you. The heavens declare the glory of God. A person that walks out and without any education at all, looks up and sees how all of this thing is made, understands there's a creator somewhere. And the Bible says they're without excuse. Now, verse 21, because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made of the corruptible man, the birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up, notice he gave them up, to uncleanliness, through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Now, look at verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed for every man. Have you noticed, now this has nothing to do with where I want to go, but you notice that the longer we go, the more commercials you see, we are worshiping now the creature more than the creator. Every commercial you turn on, it's take this pill, lose 50 pounds by in the morning. Uh, do this exercise and you'll have abs and, and this and whatever. Drink this drink and and it's and it's now we are worshiping the creature more than the creator. Now, I'm all for being healthy and I've tried my best. Uh, my dad got on to me so many times and I, I, I just, um, and finally I woke up one day and realized I wasn't getting any younger. And uh, for all the stuff I made fun of him, of him about, I find myself doing. Uh, some of the stuff, not all the stuff. <laughs> he had a juicer, he would juice up stuff and drink stuff and I wouldn't, I just, I'm, I'm not there yet. I ain't old enough yet. Um, but he was all into that stuff. And I find myself doing that. And that's all well and good to be healthy. But there's a difference in trying to be healthy and trying to, you know, prolong life or whatever than when worshiping your, uh, the body and the creature more than the creature. Now, verse 26. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even, even their women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature. Now, hold your hand up if you need me to explain that. Good. <laughs> Verse 27, And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was me. Raise your hand if you need me to explain that. Very easy, right? It does not mean we hate anybody. We're not for it. God's against it. Uh, and and it, I can't help it. Just, you know, people, well, you say, well, what if Fox News called you and said, Brother Jeremy, would you give us an opinion about this issue? I would say, nope, I'll give you what God's opinion is. Amen. You don't want to know my opinion. <laughs> Who cares what my opinion is? Why would you want to know what God's opinion is? Yes. And so there it is. Now, uh, look at verse number 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Now, you see three times he said he gave them up. I've had people say, what does that mean? What does that mean? Gave them up. Well, let me explain it this way. When God, uh, let's just say a, a young man is flying a kite and he's flying that kite up and the wind's blowing and he's holding the string down here and he's flying that kite. And if that kite could talk, that kite would look down and say, let me be free. I 
I want to do what I want to do. I don't want to be bound down. I want to roam and be free to do what I want to do. I'm 18. I got a driver's license. I can do what I want to do. And nobody tell me what to do. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Most teenagers today, that's what they sound like. <laughs> Oh, I can't wait till I get 18. I'm going to get out of the house. I'm never going to church again. And nobody will ever tell me what to do again. Well, I got news for you. As soon as you walk out that house, unless you're going to live on the street, somebody's going to have to tell you what to do so you can get a paycheck on Friday. <laughs> and then people forget this one, but there's a God up there that's the boss over everybody. So it don't matter how old you are. If you're 109 years old in here, you've got a boss. Somebody's telling you what to do. Uh, so let's say that young boy gets, or that young man gets tired of hearing that kite. And just says, all right, you want to be free? I'll let you free. And now the kite realizes he's not free. He's in the midst of destruction. And he's fixing to destroy himself. And he wishes he had an owner pulling that string again. God gave them up. This is what God does. Sometimes we uh, they, they continue to do and continue to do that which is not seemingly. Those things that are against nature. And finally God says, okay, you don't want me involved? You don't want me holding the, holding, the, holding the kite anymore? That's fine. I'll give you up. And what happens is a country will fly <laughs> down to destruction. We don't realize sometimes the guardrails that are out there on the curve on the highway, they're not there for to aggravate us. They're there to keep us from going over the edge. Boundaries are there for a reason. You have to have boundaries in your home. You have to have boundaries in your church. You have to have boundaries or people will go off the edge. You have to have somebody holding the kite or the kite's going to fall and go to destruction. We live in an age to where everybody wants to do what they want to do. Me, I want to do what I want to do, and nobody's going to tell me what to do, and I want to be free. I have rights. I have a right to health care. I have a right to a free cell phone. I have a right. I have a right. And you know what? After you really read the Bible and look, we only have one right, and that is to do what is right and to do what God says. That kite, I, you say, well, I'm not, if, if there's a person holding that string on the kite, I'm not free. Yes, you're free to do what your owner is saying do. And when God is holding that string, I'm free. I am free, but I am free to do what he, and go where he wants me to go. You don't want him to let go of the string. You don't want him to let go. You do not want God to take his hand off. Because God will give you what you want, but you will lose what you have. America, you remember the nation of Israel? The nation of Israel said, we want a king. God says, I'll tell you what, I'll get you one. They said, no, 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 no. We want to vote our own in. They voted King Saul in. God says, that's not the king I wanted. I wanted King David. So God says, okay, that's fine. I'll give you what you want, but you'll lose what you have. And we're living uh, a, a country. Um, we're going down that way and we're looking at God and shaking our fist. When I say y'all, I'm not talking about y'all. I'm saying as a country, we're shaking our fist at God saying, hey, we don't like what that Bible says. That's too harsh and we need to be uh, more lenient and we, uh, you know, all this kind of stuff. And God says, you sure? I'll take my hand off if you'd like and let you do whatever you'd like to do. Oh, you don't want that. 
If you ever feel God take his hand off, that's a bad place to be in. And that's what the book of Jude's talking about when God just takes his hand off and says, all right, here we go. And that is not a good place uh, to be. Now, let's go back to the book of Jude. And I hope that makes sense. Uh, the book of Jude. <clears throat> Those three examples. Verse 5, the nation of Israel. Verse 6, the angels have kept not their first estate. Those of the fallen angels. Verse 7, Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, verse uh, number 8. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers. All right, these filthy dreamers, they do three things. Defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Those are the three things that filthy dreamers. Filthy dreamers is... Y'all remember a few Wednesday nights back, we dealt with um, casting down imaginations, the strongholds of the mind. Well, what happens is the devil, hey, we're all, most of us are all adults in here. Think about this. The devil knows exactly when to turn a certain commercial on to get you thinking the wrong one. He knows exactly what commercial to put on and this, that, and the other. And then we start processing it in our mind. And it's, um, I'll give you another uh, uh, illustration. Maybe this one will be better. Our, our, the television. And look, I'm not, I got, I don't know how many TVs I have. But I think, I think we need to learn how to get our thumbs saved. You may be saved, but a lot of people's thumbs ain't saved. They don't know when to move on or click it off or change the channel or they just keep sitting there. Your thumb, we need to see you come down here. Your thumb, you need to get saved. And know when to turn the channel. Because what happens, let me give you for instance, uh, what goes into the eye gate the ear gate uh, goes into here. And what goes into here, if you let it process, it'll come down to here. Give me for instance. And look, you raise your kids how you want to. And my kids play video games, but we tried our best to keep a watch on what kind of video games. Do. And you think, the video games, the video, or watch, these filthy dreamers, what do they do? Defile the flesh, despise dominion. That's uh, anybody that has dominion over you. Uh, a lot of these rap songs talks about killing the popo and killing the police and anybody in dominion. Anybody in authority. Why? Because well, I don't want nobody over me. I don't want nobody telling me what to do. So I despise um, Ferguson, Missouri, where they had all these riots and all of this kind of stuff and protests. Those people are not protesting. They're destroying the town. There's a right way to protest. You want to protest lawfully. But if you want to jump on up and down on police cars and break the windshield out, and you're just you're just despising dominion. That's what you're doing. You're not trying to protest. You're trying to despise and speak evil of evil of dignities. Um, and so what happens is this kid's playing a video game and he's shooting this one and shooting that and he's shooting this ghost and this alien and whatever, this, that, and the other and he's shooting and all this kind of stuff and now they got this virtual reality and put this helmet on and all this kind of stuff and it puts you into the game. And so you're there and they play for hours and hours upon end and in the mind. Filthy dreamers in the mind. And now they feel like they're in it. And so the next morning, they get up, they get a real gun, they go to school, and they play their video game at school. And in their mind, they think, well, okay, I get three lives, and after three lives, I just hit the reset button, and everybody gets up, and we start over again. That ain't how it works. You go into the school, nobody has a reset button. It's over. And so the devil, what he does, he puts all of that in the mind, and those kids, uh, and Young people, whoever they are, I'm talking about, there's grown people that, that play all that stuff. And they go into the movie theater, they go into school, or Walmart, 
They're sitting there and they're saying, well, it's just a video game to me. I do this all day. And they're killing innocent people. Uh, and what has happened, it come into here and then it went down to here and they played it out in reality. And there is no reset button. There is no restart on the game. And it's what we're dealing with. Are, are, do you see ourselves in the book of Jude? Right before the revelation? Everything we've talked about already, we're dealing with as a nation. Um, uh, despite, defile the flesh. Um, despise dominion. Anything in authority. Speaking evil of dignities. Now you say, who are dignities? Those whom honor is due. I'll give, you, I'll give you, for instance, Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. Father and mother is a dignity that must be honored and respected and not despised. Now we're living in a day where children are, are uh, di divorcing their own parents. Speaking evil of dignities, their own parents. And that's just one. Um, and there's many, many whom honor is due in the Bible. But the, the, the home, the parents are, are one. Um, and you just... <laughs> have you noticed that, and we've already talked about rioting and all that kind of thing, have you noticed that every time you turn on the news, somebody is despising dignities. Somebody don't like... Give it for instance. They have uh, the pastor at First Baptist Church, Dallas, uh, Robert Jeffries. He pastors First Baptist Church in Dallas, and uh, W.A. Crystal used to pastor that church. Great, used to be great church, and, and Robert Jeffries is a, from what I know and what I've heard him say. But they'll have him. They'll call him in on Fox News. Uh, to talk about this issue or that issue or whatever. And he don't let nobody buy with nothing. He quotes them scriptures and tells them this, that, and the other. And then the whole purpose is, is for the other side, they don't have anything to back up their side. The only thing they can do is tear down a dignity. You say, well, he's not a dignity. Yeah, uh, 1 Timothy 5, 17, a pastor's worthy of double honor. Um, and so speaking even, so don't you know uh, anytime a preacher gets on there and says what the truth is, man, as soon as he checks out, they are going to tear him apart because that's what it's all about. Um, despising dominion and speaking evil of dignities. Let me see. I've got 2 Peter 2 wrote down for some reason and I don't remember what it says. Hang on. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse number Second <clears throat> Peter Oh yeah. Um, 2 Peter 2.10 but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness and despise government, presumptuous of they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. There it is again in 2 Peter 2 and verse 10. Um, so anyway, these filthy dreamers, you have defiling the flesh, you have despising dominion, you have speaking evil of the dignities. Now, Let's look at verse number nine and let's uh, deal with this and maybe that'll be our time. Yet Michael, the archangel, which contending, or excuse me, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. Now, notice in verse number nine, Michael is an archangel. Gabriel is an archangel. Um, I know you already know this when we dealt with verse number six. Uh, Lucifer, 
the devil used to be in heaven. He was the anointed cherub that covered. He covered the throne of God. Underneath Lucifer was your archangels. You had Michael and Gabriel. That's the only two that's mentioned. There's probably more, but those are the only two that's mentioned in, in, uh, in the scriptures. Michael and Gabriel. Um, and you have to think how much power these angels have. We'll have to do extensive study on, on angels at this point. But I'll tell you this. In the Old Testament, I'm not talking about an archangel. The angels are classified like the military. You got privates, you got um, uh, you know captains, and you got ranks. So you got your regular angels, angels. You got your arch uh, archangels, and then you got cherubim, seraphims, and all of that. And then at that one point, you had that anointed cherub that covereth, which was Lucifer, all in that chain of command. The underworld is the same way. Ephesians 6 talks about the principalities of the air, uh, rulers of darknesses and, and, and wicked places and, and all that kind of stuff. They have chain of command in, in the demon world, the fallen angel world. Uh, so Michael, and let's just say a, a regular angel, just a regular private angel in the Old Testament, slew 186,000 men with one swat. Left them, I mean, cold. Dead as a doornail. 186,000. One regular angel. So, when you move up, and now we're talking about an archangel, uh, Michael was a, a warrior. He was an archangel that, uh, matter of fact, uh, just something about Michael the archangel, if you want to read sometime over in Daniel chapter number 10, I believe it was, Daniel was having trouble getting his prayers through, prayers answered. And he couldn't get a prayer. He couldn't get a prayer through for 20, I forgot how many days, but he couldn't get a prayer through. So Michael, the archangel came. Remember I told you, the evil, the, the underworld, the um, uh, fallen angels, they are the prince of powers. That, they're not in hell. They're the prince of powers of the air. So every time you pray, guess what you're having to pray through before you get up to God? You're having to pray through all of that evilness to get your prayers through. Well, Michael, in, in uh, Daniel chapter number 10, uh, came and fought all of those evil spirits in the air so Daniel could get his prayer through. It's an amazing thing. Here in Jude, we see that Michael, the archangel, is contending or fighting with the devil. And what they're fighting about is the, over the body of Moses. Now, I don't have time to go into, but the, the death of Moses is in Deuteronomy 34 and verse number 5. Deuteronomy 34 and verse 5. Uh, you say, how do you remember that? Well, 5 is the number of death. Genesis, Exodus, and Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. The fifth book in the Old Testament. Chapter 34 and verse 5. All I have to remember is 34. I got Deuteronomy, that's the fifth book, and I got the fifth verse, and it's chapter 34. That's the death of Moses. When Moses died, God uh, hid Moses' body. Buried, had a private burial session somewhere. Nobody knows where Moses' body is. So obviously, Michael and Lucifer is fighting, contending over the body of Moses because there's a couple of different reasons, I don't know. But possibly they, uh, Satan does not want Moses to show up in Matthew 17 as one of the two witnesses of the, uh, on the Mount of Transfiguration. Possibly it was because they don't, Lucifer don't want Moses to show up as one of the two witnesses in the middle of the tribulation period. Remember the two, two witnesses, Moses and Elijah. 
will show up in the middle of the tribulation period. And I'm talking about wreak havoc on the devil. Well, obviously Satan's trying to prevent that. And Michael's fighting over it. Uh, and obviously, obviously wins. Now, uh, but he says, does not bring a raising accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. Now, let me give you this before I have to close. Um, it's, I, again, I'm on TV preachers again. But what happens is you watch television preachers and be careful about some of the, and I've heard them, and I'm just sitting there going, boy, you're asking for it. <laughs> because what they'll do, they'll get on and say, boy, I tell you what, send the devil my way. Man, I'm prayed up, I'm ready. I Send him my way. I'll fight him. You better be careful. I mean, Mark, Michael the archangel was having a little trouble. I don't think the devil will have any trouble with us. Now, you know, don't don't pick a fight. You can. Now, you know, you may say, okay, how do we how do we combat the devil? How do we get rid of the devil? You do it exactly like Michael did. I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. Get away from me, and he'll move on until tomorrow. <laughs> he'll show back up. But now, hey, if you have if you see somebody and they say, man, I'm, where's the devil been? I ain't seen the devil in a couple of months. <laughs> you need to get down there to this altar and find out why. Because if the devil ain't messing with you, you may be on his side. <laughs> if you come in and say, man, I'm telling you, man, this devil's been beating me up half to death. He won't leave me alone. You ought to get down here and thank the Lord. <laughs> Because you must be on the right side. But that's how you defeat the devil. I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. And we were talking about those evil spirits in, in uh, uh, verse number six. And I, I had a, a, a lady uh, it's old in the old building at, at Holy Hill. She started visiting new in town, this, that, and the other. And uh, she told me one time, she said, man, there's something going on in my house and this, that, and the other. And um, uh, she said, how do I? I said, well, this is what you need to do. You need to, pray, you need to read the Bible out loud. You need to read the Bible out loud and turn on Christian music and, and I'm talking about rebuke the devil in the name of the Lord. Uh, you said, why do you read it out loud? Because the devil can't read your mind. If you ever want to pray something, you won't, don't want the devil to know it. You pray from the heart and don't open your mind. The devil can't read your mind. But he can't hear. So if you're praying out loud, he will hear that prayer. And, you know, that's fine. There's some stuff. But if you want to keep it between you and God, you better pray and keep your mind. Pray from here. And the devil can't read your heart, but he can read your mind. And that's why I say pray it out loud. If you pray it, if you just read the Bible and you read it silently, the devil can't hear that. But you read that out loud and he hears that. Um, anyway, rebuke the devil in the name of the Lord. And uh, he, But now, it's not an attitude of, you just send the devil my way and I'll show him. Now uh, he'll show you. Uh, be careful. But when you take when you take your heavenly Father with you, that's different. When you rebuke in the name of the Lord, that's my daddy. And there's where the devil has trouble. He can't combat that. But if you try to take him on yourself, he won't have no trouble. And and be and be and and please take note of this and be aware. When you hear something that uh, you know, whatever it is, boy, I have to watch this because whatever you hear, whatever you see, and this, that, and the other, we see a lot of stuff. And I've heard, and I've even made the mistake and said it myself. Well, I. I will never be caught in that. I would never do that. The 
but that was wisdom. And he'll say, okay, we'll see. You just have to say, Lord, help me to never do that. Because if you if you talk real big and bad and say, I never do that. Well, I know so and so did it, but yeah, I won't never. Be careful. The devil is listening. But we rebuke him in the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen. All right. I appreciate all of you coming tonight. Any questions?